Good morning, everyone. My name is Winona. I am a grateful believer in Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for just the victories that he has given in my life over, over my whole life. And right now, being in recovery, I still struggle with the residuals brought on by my addictions and by my um, compulsions that I developed over the years to handle life. Amen? So... That's me. I am also the leader of Busted Knuckles, which is an adult recovery ministry over at Roadhouse Biker Church, which is in San Bernardino, California. If you are in the area tonight, which is Tuesday night, we do have Biker Bible Study. It starts at 7 o'clock. I wish you would join us. It's 255 West Benedict Street or Benedict Road. I can't remember what it is. It's off of Arrowhead in South Arrowhead in San Bernardino. Love to have you guys come and join us. Ask for Winona. Come sit with me. Anyway, before we get started, today we are going to be in 1 Corinthians. But before we get started with our devotional, let's just give thanks to God for another day. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with just grateful hearts, Father God. We're grateful for, here in Southern California, the sun shining. And in the United States, we're grateful for just our freedoms that we have brought on by our brave men and women in the armed forces and just just those just on the front line father god we are just grateful for what you've done for us and blessed us with and we just pray for just your will to be done across this nation father god bless our government watch over them help them make their decisions based on your will father god Bless those, the frontline workers, Father, as they deal with this COVID situation. We're grateful that the numbers are beginning to go down. We're grateful for the vaccine. And so we just pray that just your healing hand stretch across this nation. In your son's name, amen. Amen. So, hey, um, before we do get started, I want to just talk about our roadmap. Oh, there's that. No, that doesn't help. Our roadmap number two. It is our road trip to recovery. Roadmap number two says, Dazed and confused, I opened my eyes and realized that God was real because I survived hitting my wall. As I shook off the dust, I knew he loved me, he cared for me, and he had plans for me. He picked me up, he patched me up, and he put me on his path. I found God. And the verse that goes with it, but I will restore, restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you were called an outcast, Zion, for whom nobody cares, Jeremiah thirty seventeen. God is real. He loves me and has a plan for my life. Amen. So we have this wonderful God in our life that has, we found him, we realized that there is something more in this world that's going to help me re resume my life. Now, the, sec the second step says we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Goes with roadmap number two. We found God, and he is going to restore us to sanity. So today, we're going to be talking about temptation. And no, I'm not talking about the, the singing sensational group from Motown. I'm talking about temptations brought on by the prince of evil, by Satan. In this world that we live, there's temptations everywhere. Be it food, uh, the computer brings lots of temptations at our fingertips, and drugs, alcohol. You walk out the front door and... and you could if you wanted feed every temptation that you have. But you know, the God that picked us up, patched us up, and put us on his path is not going to send you back into this world without reinforcements, without his strength back in your play. So today, we are, like I said, in 1 Corinthians 10, and it is verses, oh, I just lost my place. Hold on a second. I think it's 12, 12 through 13, okay? Just remember that, you know, God's got your back whenever we're faced with things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start reading here um, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, 13. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you 
except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure. I'm going to read those two verses one more time. Because we go through this every day. Every day. So, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So in these verses, Paul is encouraging the Corinthian people to um, think about, you know, I mean, there's all this stuff going on around them. Corinthian, Cor the town of Corinth or village city of Corinth at that time was kind of like a Vegas. It was like Sin City. And so Paul is encouraging these Christian citizens um, about temptation. And he said, and, and I'm kind of looking at my notes here, and he's telling them, remember that wrong desires, these, these temptations that you're feeling, these things that you're feeling in your heart, has happened to everyone. So don't think that you're the Lone Ranger. You're not the only one that's being tempted. And these temptations that we're feeling, they've been around for thousands of years. Maybe, you know, the Corinthians didn't have the drugs and what have you that we have now. They didn't have internet that we have now, but they still had, you know, the wines. I'm sure that the herbs and plants and stuff, they figured out a way to use those as hallucinogens or what have you. They had pornography. They had that. All of that stuff was there. They gambled. They shopped. It was all there, the same as it is now. So your temptations, what does it say, is nothing that... Nothing has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. It's still common to mankind now. So he is telling them that people have been tempted like you are right now, and they've overtaken it. They've overcome it, I should say. They, um, others have resisted this temptation. So can you. Okay? Don't, don't think that you're the lone ranger. Don't think that you're being singled out by these temptations. It's happened to... To the best of us and but we've overcome those temptations and we've resisted it and so you know and just remember that any temptation can be resisted with God God is going to give you that power to help you get through it it says here but God is faithful and will not not let you be tempted but when you are he's going to provide a way out so you can endure it all right you know, because in this world, like I said, you open your front door, you walk out, temptations all around us. So God is going to give you a way to resist this temptation. So he's going to help you recognize and single out people, places, and things that are your triggers. And I tell you what, looking through, you know, in the background here, looking through the, the living room, wherever you go, anything can be a, a, a trigger for somebody. Somebody brought that up to me the other night, and it's true. Anything in this room could trigger somebody at one point. So God is going to help you recognize what is tempting you. And he's going to help you get past that. Okay, um, He's going to remind you to run from anything that you know is wrong. Run from anything that you know is wrong. And I know I read, what was it, um, 2 Timothy 2.22. It tells you, flee the desires of your youth. I'll read that in full here in a bit, but God is 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 pointing these things out. He's like you know, like I said, he's going to help you recognize what's tempting you. He wants you to run from what's tempting you. He's going to he's going to help you choose to do only what is right, what fits in his will for your life. We know right from wrong. We know right from wrong. And so God's going to help us stay on that right path. Okay? And God is also going to help us seek friends with the same mindset as ours. Seek friends who love God and can offer help when you're tempted. Running from temptation, from a tempting situation, is your first step to victory. And now I'm going to go to 2 Timothy 2, 22. Just real quick, little blurb. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. 
So he wants you to seek these things along with people who have that like-mindedness. Amen? Amen. So um, i got all these notes on here. So let's read our devotional. It's the Life Recovery Devotional. We are in uh, step two, and it's day 23, and it's called Common Temptations. Entertaining belief in an addiction's magical cure often hinders our recovery. One of the most common such beliefs is that someday we will finally be beyond the reach of temptation. Someday I won't be tempted. <laughs> Unfortunately, temptation is a permanent part of our world and of human experience. The Bible says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. 1 Corinthians 10.13 not only is temptation all around us, it's within us as well. So in James 1, 14, it tells us temptation comes from our own desires. So it's what's in our heart. Okay. So even if we could rid ourselves of all external temptations, we still have to live with the destructive desires within our secret selves. Even Jesus Christ himself faced temptation, and yet he never sinned. Before he was tempted, he spent an, an extended period of time alone in the wilderness, and during that time he went without food. We are usually tempted the most during times when we're lonely and hungry. Amen. Facing temptation, <coughs> excuse me. Facing temptation is a part of accepting reality. We need to accept that we will always be susceptible to temptation in our areas of weakness and predisp predisposition. We're always going to be tempted in that. Okay, We have certain weaknesses that we're always going to be tempted. But God is going to give you strength to, to get past it. It's unrealistic to believe that our sinful nature will ever get better. When we put away the magical belief that temptation will disappear, we will be more aware and better able to avoid falling under temptation's powers. We need to prayerfully seek God's help in dealing with this reality of life. Temptation is always going to be around us. Temptations touch everyone. Facing this fact is an important step in recovery. So I have a little note here. Belief in an instant cure for addiction will put our recovery at risk. There is no instant cure for addiction. On the other hand, belief that we will someday be beyond the reach of temptation is also dangerous. We have to face life's reality. That temptation is around us. We have to strengthen up. we got to pull up our big girl, big boy panties and take care of business. Our business running from these things that are that are tempting us recognize the things that are tempting us you know what your triggers are i know what my triggers are we need to be aware of them and we need to we need to run from them flee from the old desires of our youth because now we're new creations we don't have we i mean yes we're going to they're always going to be in our heart but that's not part of our life anymore so we need to flee from that Amen. Amen. Hey, before we close up today, I had a prayer request from a friend who has um, a young woman in her life. She's like her second mom. And she asked for prayer because this young woman tomorrow is going through some surgery. And it made me think that we all have family members, friends. Every day somebody's going through surgery that's scaring the family, that that are asking for prayer. And so I'd like to ask you all to lift up just the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, the, the administration people, the, the person when you first walk in the door to the surgery center, the, the admitting clerk, everybody that's involved. Let's lift these people up for just God's hand upon them today tomorrow, the next day. Let's lift them up so that our friends, our family, fellow believers, fellow unbelievers, let's pray for just success in these surgeries and healing for everyone. All right? And if you do know somebody that needs prayer, give them a call. Lift them up. If they ask for prayer, stop what you're doing. Pray for them right then and there because they need it. If they ask for prayer, they're needing that prayer right then, right there. All right, so be that prayer warrior that I know you are. And you guys have a great day today, and we will talk tomorrow.